I, I'm going to try this again. I tried a few times already and um, people were ringing the phone, people were calling on the phone, people were ringing at the doorbell. Um, it's just ridiculous. Um, it's interesting. It's like there seems to be, when you're trying to do something good, it's like my friend says, no good deed ever goes unpunished. <laughs> That's not what I think, and it's not what I believe, but it sometimes feels like that, and it actually connects to what I'm going to talk about today really, really quickly. I wanted to give a little Tzvar Torah or an understanding about this Shabbat. It's called Shabbat Zachor, and number one, it's always like a very strange thing to me. Like, why are we into uh, the idea that comes up in the Parshat Zachor that we read on the Shabbat before Purim? We all go to Shul. And we hear how we have a special mitzvah to eradicate the entire nation of Amalek. And it's a very strange thing. It's a very violent mitzvah. Like, why? Right? And we're not supposed to do it now. We're supposed to wait till we get to Eretz Yisrael, until we are completely uh, calm and, and relaxed, and we have no other enemies to fight. It says, V'haya b'haniach Hashem elokecha lecha. As soon as Hashem gets rid of all your enemies before you and you're all relaxed and basically you're about to bring about the tikkun, the end of the days and, and Mashiach and Beit HaMikdash and, and appoint a king and so on, that's when you have a special mitzvah to get rid of Amalek. And the question is, first of all, number one, like why do we even have this mitzvah to get rid of an entire nation? I don't know about you, but I'm like impressed with the fact that the Ukrainians are, are literally being helped by Israel and they're being accepted, refugees from the Ukraine, not necessarily all Jewish people. Um, and just we as a nation have mercy and compassion on, on another nation if they're suffering, especially if the children are suffering. You know, it's just the compassion and it doesn't matter that we don't necessarily have a good relationship with the Ukrainian non-Jews. I mean, in the Holocaust, they were totally there with the Nazis, if it not even worse than the Nazis. So it's not like we, we um, in general, are uh, a nation that kind of like takes revenge against other nations and gets rid of them and eradicates them from like everyone, like literally gets rid of, we're supposed to get rid of everybody in the nation of Amalek. How, how could we even have that mitzvah? And number two, if it's for some reason such an important mitzvah and it's like getting rid of the roots of evil in you and so on and so forth, why do we wait till the end of days? I mean, it's been thousands of years and we've allowed this evil to exist and why don't we just get rid of it right away? And we've suffered so much from it, right? From this especially Amalek, it seems to be not only is he the ancestor of Haman, who is the evil man in the Purim story, but... It also seems to be that he is the, the Amalek is the ancestors of Nazi Germany, Hitler. So what's up? Let's just get rid of them right away and that we don't have to suffer from them so much, right? We could just move on. So Natiba Shalom says a few things. First of all, he says, Amalek has a tendency to rear its ugly head right at the time that we are about to bring about complete tikkun. What does Hashem really want? Why did he create us? Hashem really wants us to be completely happy, completely good, complete and perfect and serene and calm and have a nice relationship with him. That is what Hashem wants. And Hashem wants the whole world to come to a tikkun and for us, the Jewish people, to be a special um, light unto the nations and to bring everyone to a knowledge and understanding and relationship with Hashem. That's what Hashem wants, okay? Great. So why does it look like for years and years and years and thousands of years, things are not at all going in that direction? And that is because of a very simple thing called free will and the Yetzir Hara and evil that exists in this world. And we do need to uh, have that in the world because otherwise you can't really have a relationship with Hashem and it's not considered uh, that you've accomplished anything if you, you know, don't have evil. You don't have another choice, okay? So if you don't have an alternative, then really all the good that you do is not really yours, and it's not really an accomplishment. So Hashem had to create evil. It's almost like he's like, oh, I can't believe I have to do this, but I do, okay? So Hashem had to create evil so that we would have free will, and that we would be able to bring the entire world 
on our own to its tikkun. This is not a war against a Malek that, ha that can happen by just Hashem getting rid of him for us, getting rid of the entire nation for us. Like he did. He did do that. He eradicated other nations from the world. Why doesn't he just do that with Amalek? But the whole point of Amalek is that it's the epitome of evil. It expresses itself as the Yetzer Hara within each and every one of us. And we have to do it on our own. We have to reach a point where we are, are relaxed from all our other enemies and we get to the point where we're ready to eradicate the entire nation of Amalek. So, says Netivot Shalom, that we, each and every one of us, has a little personal Amalek. And it's true, we do have a mitzvah to get rid of the arch, archetype, is that a word? Uh, of evil. And that is Amalek. But that has to happen at the end of days. And what happens is that every time we're about to like reach an accomplishment, reach a milestone, like after the Jewish people received the Torah and they were about to go into the land of Israel, that's when Amalek struck. Or after we went into the land of Israel and after we pretty much conquered it and then we uh, appointed a king, Shaul, that's when Amalek struck, okay? So there's all, like a, it's almost as if your Yetzir Hara, okay, expressed by Amalek, it, it senses that there's a, a, an opportunity here that's about to be, he's about to be eradicated completely and he's not going to have a life anymore. And that's when it goes full force and it attacks, okay? So for us, each of us personally, we have that. Sometimes in our lives, we reach like a milestone and we feel like, well, wow, we are progressing. We are getting there. We are reaching our purpose. We are, we are so developed. And we've reached this point in our lives where we, we kind of feel like, wow, this is an accomplishment. I, I am reaching the end here. I'm reaching the end of the struggle. And that's when the gates of Hara jumps up and attacks you. And you're like, oh, I guess I wasn't so perfect. Or I guess I wasn't so progressing in my, in my you know, self-growth and my personal development. I, I guess I wasn't, you know, because here's that Yetzir Hara again. And it's not true. It's that the Yetzir Hara sees that you are progressing and it gets nervous. And so it tries to attack. So first of all, we should feel better about that, that even when we are failing or we feel like we're failing, we should know that it's because the Yetzir Hara is attacking because it sees your progress and it doesn't want you to reach your destiny. So we have to just say to ourselves, it's okay. Two steps backward, let's keep moving forward. Okay, two steps backward and one step forward. Let's keep going, okay? Because that is, that's the purpose of life. There's nothing we could do about it. That's number one. Number two says Nativa Chalom. There's two ways to fight the Yetzir Hara, and this is our personal mitzvah of getting rid of Amalek. And that is by two ways. Number one, the positive, and number one, and number two, the negative. What does that mean? Number one, the positive. Every day he says, Yom she Yehudi lo asabo tova lechavero eno nechshav leyom b'chaim. You need to increase good. A day that you didn't do good for your friend, your fellow man, um, is not considered a day in your life. I remember, no, forget I remember, and the other thing. That is one thing. We increase light and it goes against, it chases away the darkness. That's how we fight the Amalek within us. That's number one. And number two, another thing is, Yom she Yehudi eino osebo peula lehachis et hayetzer eino nechshav liyom b'chaim. Also a day in which you do not do something that angers the Yetzir Hara, that, that just does something against him, that break, that prevents him from uh, getting ahead, that is also not considered a day in your life. Meaning, every single day we have to do something to prevent the Yetzir Hara from getting ahead. And whatever that means, it could be like I was about to say something bad about a particular organization, doesn't matter. And, um, and I just said, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that because I wanted to get the Yetzir Hara angry. And maybe it wasn't really halachically Lashon Hara. It's okay for me to say it because I wasn't speaking against somebody specific. But no, no. It for sure got the Yetzir Hara angry that I stopped myself from saying that. And that's what we have to do. On one hand, every day that you don't do something good for somebody is not considered a day in your life, meaning every day we increase the light and that light 
banishes the Yetzirah, banishes the Amalek within us, okay, slowly but surely, it gradually grows and grows, and we become a more of a light, enlightened, good person, and that gets rid of Amalek. And number two is preventing the Yetzirah from doing what it's meant to do and what it wants to do. And that is the two, those are the two approaches to this particular war of Amalek. Now, yes, it's true. We have to go through the motions of, we're Yotze, we, we, we are doing our mitzvah of remembering Amalek and getting rid of them on one Shabbat a year, right before Purim. And that's the Shabbat. So if you go to shul and you listen to this parsha and you think to yourself, you know what? I really need to be part of getting rid of the evil in this world every single day. And I'm going to do it by two, two ways. One is a positive approach by increasing light, doing good for our fellow man, doing good for the world. And number two, every single day, we have to do something to to anger the Yetzirah, to see, say like, okay, I'm just not doing it. I'm just not doing it because I know that that's what the Yetzirah wants me to do. Okay, everybody, good luck with that. Have a great Shabbat Zachor.